the various forms of dog aggression, let's talk all about it. Dog aggression can manifest in various forms, each driven by a different underlying cause or motivation. Here are the different types. All right, you guys, the first type of aggression that we're gonna talk about today is going to be fear aggression. Now, as a pet dog trainer who specializes in helping dog owners with uh, aggression in general, this is gonna be a big one for me. This is the one that I see the most, and more times than not, there's actually a genetic predisposition to this, um, fear aggression can actually happen in one of two ways. The first one is going to be trauma. Dogs can experience, uh, have bad experiences much in the same way that we can. Um, the other is a genetic predisposition. This is often overlooked. Uh, it's often misidentified as a dog that has been mistreated in some way. Uh, also misidentified as trauma as well. But uh, in, in some rare cases, it could be a combination of both. It was a dog that was mildly fear aggressive, had a bad experience, and it, tend, uh, it happened to uh, heighten this fear aggression. Um, and fear aggression can also be um, mild. It can be severe. Uh, we, there can be fear biters. There are dogs that are fearful that are just all bark and no bite. Um, and without question, this is the most common type of aggression that I get called in for. Believe it or not, uh, there are many dogs that are raised in puppies, raised as puppies, and that are brought up in family homes that have never mis been mistreated. And around a year old, uh, maybe nine months old, these dogs start to act out aggressively hormones have come into play the dog is experimenting with aggression a little bit and and it's clear in this particular scenario that this is a genetic predisposition it is one of the unfortunate fallouts of breeding dogs um, it's we it's not talked about very much but unfortunately it's just a side effect of breeding in general and uh, the one last thing I want to say about this is that dogs uh, uh, that are at that have a genetic predisposition to being fearful, um, this is genetic. There's a genetic component here, so training is only going to take us so far. For the most part, it'll help us keep a lid on the behavior. It'll uh, it'll help us. A dog trainer that is uh, skilled in this area of expertise will give you the ability to actually manage it and keep a lid on it so it's not allowed to express itself. There's many ways to go about this. If you're experiencing this yourself, you may want to consult with a dog trainer that has experience with it. The best way to do that is to do your homework. Uh, most uh, uh, Places of business these days can uh, be reviewed online. So do a little digging around, check Yelp, check Google, see if the dog trainer that you're interested in hiring that's advertising themselves as someone who may help with this type of aggression actually has had some success with it. I think that's all we have on this topic. Let's move on. Okay, the next type of aggression that we're going to talk about is going to be territorial aggression or barrier aggression. They could be, uh, they can almost be considered the same thing. Um, most dogs are territorial by nature. Uh, it tends to happen uh, within a certain proximity, usually in the home. We see dogs can be territorial in automobiles as well. Um, but a lot of times uh, it's also known as barrier aggression. So meaning that uh, when someone knocks at the door in your home, your dog may run and bark, but uh, the, whether or not this dog is friendly is determined once you come through that barrier. So a friendly dog, once you come through that barrier, they're gonna be excited. They're gonna wanna kind of maybe play with you. 
And that, that dog is, for the most part, based on that particular type of body language, that dog is going to be friendly. Then, if we just talked about fearful dogs and fear aggression. So, uh, uh, once a person passes a barrier with a dog that's fear aggressive, this becomes a little more personal for that type of dog. So, fearful dogs and territorial aggression uh, tend not to go well with each other. Um, that dog is going to take it a little more personally and uh, may be threatening to bite, may be stressing out in that particular situation. You may hear the pitch in their barking change a little bit, indicating that the dog is uh, under a high amount of stress because the dog is afraid in that particular moment. Uh, but in either case, ter territorial aggression and barrier aggression is another type of dog aggression that we see in pet dogs. Okay, the next type of aggression in dogs that we're gonna talk about is going to be protective aggression. So dogs can attempt to protect other members of what it considers to be its pack. That could be dogs, that could be people. Um, there's a little bit of a disconnect for the most part when it comes to fearful dogs in this context. Many people think that their fearful dog is actually protecting them, but in reality, the dog is actually protecting itself. So common misconception in dogs, because dogs can be taught to protect us. I've spent a lot of time in doing that type of work. Um, so uh, more times than not, if you think your dog is uh, protecting you, it's, pr it's probably protecting itself. Okay, the next type of aggression is going to be possessive aggression. This is also known as resource guarding or possessiveness, but this type of aggression displays itself when a dog is trying to guard things that it finds value in, such as food, toys, water, and even people. Um, a dog who is possessive aggressive um, can, in, in some cases, not have a history of guarding a particular object or a particular person, but then it can just manifest itself and suddenly now this dog is guarding things that it used to not guard in the past. So possessive aggression, it can change from object to object or person to person. The next type of aggression that we're gonna talk about is, is called predatory aggression. So dogs are predators, even though there are pets, they, are, they have teeth, they use those things to kill other animals. And for the most part, predatory aggression is considered anything that the dog likes to chase that is smaller than itself. Birds, lizards, bunnies, cats, smaller dogs, even objects uh, in our lives that move, such as bicycles and skateboards, um, skates, uh, motorcycles, cars, for that matter, any of those things can be considered uh, predatory aggression. Okay, the next uh, type of aggression is going to be social aggression. So this type of aggression is one in which a dog may show aggression when trying to establish or maintain their social ranking within a group of dogs or even with people. Uh, this is also can be referred to as dominance in some cases or it's an older term for social aggression. Um, However, these days, I don't really consider dominance dominance. I think of it a little bit more as bully behavior. So dogs, they can totally be jerks uh, with each other. Um, and for the most part, we see this type of aggression uh, from dog to dog or dog on dog, I should say. And we see it a little less with people, but it does exist. Dogs can try to establish the uh, social ranking over us, but it is rare. Okay, the next type of aggression is going to be frustrated, elicited aggression. This type of aggression happens when a dog um, is excited or frustrated by something that it can't reach or access. Um, the dog can become frustrated in this sense and may act out aggressively. Um, occasionally, uh, it, this is also uh, going to happen when a dog is restrained by a leash and is trying to go say hi to another person or go say hi to another dog. Your dog is actually friendly, but they're just frustrated that they can't get to their target. So this is frustrated, elicited aggression.
The next type of aggression that a dog can display is going to be pain-induced aggression. So like us, when we're hurt, we may not want you to touch that part of our body. If I sprained an ankle, or if I twisted a knee, or if I cut myself in some way, it's gonna hurt. And uh, dogs are the same way in that sense. They may not want you to touch those sensitive areas when they are hurt. And in this sense, if you attempt to do that, they can become aggressive because they don't want you touching the place that hurts them. So that's pain-induced aggression. Another type of aggression is going to be redirected aggression. So this happens when a dog can't actually get to the source that's causing them to be aggressive in the first place. They will, they will redirect that aggression on a nearby an, uh, animal or person for that matter. Um, so if you've ever seen two dogs uh, being territorially aggressive behind a fence, two dogs, they're being aggressive behind a fence, and while acting out in this territorial aggression, they bump into each other, and now they're fighting. That is redirected aggression, okay? Um, and it's quite common. It can happen with people, too. Uh, that, that frustrated, elicted aggression that we just mentioned a moment ago, uh, if a dog is being restrained by a leash and they're trying to get to their target, they may become frustrated in that sense and they may uh, redirect that aggression even on the person on the other end of the leash. So that's redirected aggression. Okay, another type of aggression is going to be sex-related aggression. Uh, dogs can exhibit aggression driven by sexual competition. This is usually happening between two male dogs when they are competing for a female in heat. So sex-related aggression. All right, maternal aggression. So uh, the two males competing uh, were, were able to tie up with the female and she became pregnant. Now she has puppies. So maternal aggression can happen anytime that a mother perceives threat to her puppies. Learned aggression. This is another type of dog aggression. This is a type of aggression that is learned uh, through reinforcement. So quite common in protection training or police training. Uh, we are trying to elicit aggression from the dog by a decoy or a helper who is trying to stimulate this dog to be aggressive. They happen to make that happen. The dog starts barking and the handler, who is on the uh, backside of the leash, starts to reinforce this by pumping up the dog, praising the dog, and making the dog feel good about what they're doing. Learned aggression. So dogs can become overly intense or rough when playing with each other, and this can uh, create a little bit of competitive aggression. Dogs are comp uh, creatures of competition, much like we are, so uh, it's not uncommon for dogs to become a little aggressive during play. All right, the next type of aggression that we're gonna talk about is one that is not mentioned very much online at all. Um, you may have not heard about this, but it is called idiopathic aggression. This is a type of aggression with no identifiable cause. Uh, often, many times, it's very unpredictable, um, and it can be quite difficult to manage. I think this is typically just a genetic defect in a dog. I think that it's a wiring issue in the brain. Um, and uh, it, it's, uh, it's something that can be a little difficult to really get on top of from a training point of view, but it is a type of aggression that we do see, but incredibly rare. We're talking about two, per two tenths of 1% of all dogs. All right, you guys, that's all we have on this topic today. If you think you're experiencing any of these types of aggression with your dog at home, it's probably worthwhile to seek out a dog trainer who has experience with this. And we'll see you in the next video. Peace.